Good evening and welcome to Options Center. It is Sunday. Happy Sunday, everybody. 9-17-23. Thank you for joining us here. We have a lot of information to go through. Sorry my um, weekend video was a little bit late here, but you have an opportunity tonight and perhaps, uh, you know, for a few days to use this information and uh, we can refer to a lot of these things. We'll, we'll start with the higher time frame on SPX and we'll go down to the 65. We'll, uh, we'll look at, at uh, a lot of indicators on the daily time frame. And most of all, uh, like I said in the last video, we will check out Tesla. We have a swing trade on uh, actual multiple expirations for Tesla on the downside. And I'll show you what happens um, if we if Tesla decides to go up uh, and, and, and when we're when we know we're wrong um, and then uh, where some of our targets are. We'll figure all that out together here in this video. So thanks for joining us. Um, if you're new here, go down to that bottom right hand corner. See that options tenor logo? Well, hit it and subscribe. And don't forget to like the videos. That helps us out tremendously. That's one of the best things you could do. If you want to help us out directly, go down to the description below. There's several ways you could do so. Now, let's jump into it. We have SPX on the monthly time frame. We have the 1929 crash here. 1929 crash. That's the peak. That's where our trend lines peak back here in 2000 and also here in 2022 now 23 clearly but that's where those peaks ended uh, there's a lot of confluence happening where that peak happened all right from 2008 top and from uh some of these tops here in 2010 when we were recovering that's a channel top as well so a lot of confluence we think this is a major topping area because of all these confluences because of everything that's happening with these wave counts in the long run we uh we think we're making a lower high here uh specifically but i think that uh, we break this channel i see this as a one two three four and five wave completed and now we're in a wave one or a and now completed wave two or b and we had lower i i expect fully to break the channel and possibly i think revisit the bottom of the corona crash also a good uh support area here at the 21 to 2200 area where the bottom of this channel is the 200 month moving average i think this is a great spot for things to happen it doesn't have to be down it could be a little bit higher okay there's other ways you can draw support here you don't have to use the wicks you can use the bodies so if it takes time plenty of time to happen what about that spot right there you know body to body around the 2500 area okay there's other ways that we're going to look at it there's going to be fibs and uh certain retracements as well we're not going to do that in this video we're checking out um some of these indicators we're going to look at the macd which we have to respect this bullish cross so we do have a bull scenario but it's unlikely to me uh i i will pin that up top we have the bull scenario video and uh, you'll be able to watch that. I think I'll pin it up top and on the end of this video as well. So we got into oversold or excuse me, overbought territory as well on this bounce on the monthly time frame. So we are over bought and now we're coming back. Now we're pulling back. We're still above that eight EMA. So we have to be careful. The trend is still up. But if we if and when we break that trend, uh, we'll be following that trend to the downside. And uh, right now we have the slow stow, which already has its early signs of reversal. We crossed over, the leader line crossed over, and we're right at that 80, that 80 line, which would be a sell signal. Once we cross, that's a sell signal. I mean, it's it's on it right now. 
so once we cross that, that's a sell signal. Um, we are already overbought. That would um, that would be part of that sell signal as well. And then we'll be waiting for confirmation on the monthly time frame for this MACD to cross over. Uh, no, uh, no waning on the um, histogram yet, but we'll we'll be watching this. This is a very long term chart here. Let's move down to the weekly time frame. All right, on the weekly, where are we at here? Weekly time frame. Okay, we showed we've shown this a couple times. Sorry, I need a little sip there. Uh, we showed this on a, a couple different videos. We had this rising pivot from uh, 2018 to 2018. You see it's been respected many times. Well, we are respecting it again. We actually broke above it, a fake break back down, and retested it. And are rejecting it now so I, I don't think we move any higher it's possible that we still can retest this channel top but I think it's unlikely so we're, we're resting right on top let's dig in here a little further we're resting right on top that 80 EMA the 8 EMA was holding price action for two weeks now okay so we we broke above it got into the pivot back tested this trend line and then the 8 EMA held the next week and held again. We have two inside weeks. We're going to have a big move. I think that moves to the downside. But we might see just a little bit of a bounce early into the week. We have FOMC next week. And so this might um, we might see a little bit of a bounce off of this 8 EMA just into FOMC on Wednesday at 2 p.m., uh, we may start selling before. It doesn't matter. We're watching price action. Uh, FOMC will be a catalyst. And if that catalyst is bearish, we continue uh, pretty aggressively to the downside because this is going to be an ABC. If minimum, if this is uh, if this symmetry plays out correctly and we have an ABC to the downside, where A equals C would be at the bottom of this channel. Okay, so that, that's exactly what this chart is portraying, is A, B, C at the bottom of the channel would be approximately 3,300. So that's our very minimum situation. That's our very, very minimum uh, bear situation that we're going to go through. And if this is the case where this channel holds, it's actually a bull flag. So at that point, we'd have our ABC correction and we move higher. Okay? The low would be in. We move higher. We start breaking this channel and heading lower. Something else is happening. This might be a little bit more like a 1-2 and further down for the wave 3. All right, let's pull up some of these indicators on the weekly time frame and see what's happening. We already had our bear cross here. So you see the histogram starting to turn red. We're crossing over to the bear side. We have a sell signal there on the weekly time frame. We have a sell signal after, after a bearish divergence. And then we have the, um, uh, after the bearish divergence, we came back up into overbought area. Uh, for those conditions and then we have this trend line this uptrend line on the RSI where we almost broke we just had this little bounce off of this trend line and we're starting to come back down so um, I do I do think this is going to start breaking this whole trend I think we're going to start heading to the downside we're going to start a downtrend in this RSI as well so we'll take this uh, we'll take this dashed line and we'll start from this divergence and, and, and use that later on. Not right now. We're not going to do it, but later on. Okay, so we had a bounce off the slow stow. We're not folding over yet, but we do have that downtrend, just like we, we said we're going to have here. Uh, you know what? Just so we can see what I'm talking about, I'm going to go ahead and change this one, though. I'm going to draw a line. So we have this downtrend. Maybe we just come up just a little bit to test it, but we're we're going to start to curl over and, and probably start to head lower 
and oscillate on the bottom side. I don't think we're going to, if we start coming through, we start making new highs, we start breaking this uptrend, things like that. That's a whole nother story. And then we'll, we'll uh, be a, much more bullish, but I do think this is going to curl over. We had our bounce already. We're going to curl over and we're going to start making lower lows and start oscillating the bottom side. Just similar, but opposite to when the bulls take control and they oscillate up above. You know, they keep coming down. They don't make a new low. Okay. I think we're going to do that kind of price action there. Okay. Let's go over to the daily time frame. On the daily, trend is our friend. Let's change this board over. All right. A lot more information on this chart. We have that rising pivot that we we're talking about in the gray. You see the rising wedge that we broke out from and made a fake break. And we're trying to retest that area. We did retest it once along with that uh, that rising pivot from 2018. And then we had this trend line, if we dig in here a little bit more, that was so important. That's actually causing our triangle here. Okay, that's our triangle bottom. And we're still in this chop zone. And a really good video for you to watch would be the one that I made on last Monday. And that's um, called Chop or Drop. So I'll pin that above as well and at the end of the video there'll be a good uh, a good video to see in depth like how i said hey we're in the triangle pattern we have three different options of what we're looking for now we're narrowed down to two so we have two different options that we're thinking of and we'll do that together in the lower time frame at the end after um after we get down to the 65 on the spx we'll go to spy We'll check out SPY. We'll leave Tesla for the end, but we'll do the 65-minute chart on SPY, uh, and we'll we'll um, we'll draw our lines to where our projections are are going to be because we're getting towards the apex of this, and it's going to break up or it's going to break down. So we have a, it, we could even have a third scenario. We'll we'll show you. I'll show you exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for two main scenarios. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm just going to keep this simple. Two main scenarios that we're looking at. Okay. So right now uh, you see the moving averages are moving sideways. That just indicates our choppy action sideways. It just, that reaffirms we're moving sideways. You, it, when all these moving averages come together, just like this area right here, price was really just moving sideways. It was regrouping from a downtrend and moving sideways. And you see all these moving averages together. That just, that tells you that there's an explosion that's about to happen. So we had our consolidation period and we started moving upward. We have our consolidation period where moving averages are together and we're going to break to the upside or downside from here. Okay. On the, uh, we're on the 20 day moving average, the so simple. 20 day moving average and so yes i do think we're gonna have a little bounce you're gonna have to watch this 50 and the eight even though they're sideways you're gonna have to watch them those might be a really good spot to to reverse from so we have um this initial move uh we'll look on the elliott wave and i'll tell you exactly the five wave move down five wave move down exactly what we're looking for but uh we're gonna have i, I think we have a five wave move here so we're gonna have some sort of retracement back into this um, 44, perhaps 80 area. Okay, but our initial target, and uh, again, we'll go to the Elliott Wave. Our initial target, you see I have this green area. I think we're going to have some sort of bounce here. That's our consolidation area. Okay, we've we've talked about this many, many of times, but that's our consolidation area. On, on the SPX, I have this turquoise here because we had a um, this turquoise resistance because we had a ascending triangle and we broke out from, you see how it made great resistance there, great resistance. The price action started to uh, break out from here and we have our ascending triangle and we had our breakout from the ascending triangles. Well, I think we're going to retest that. Price usually retests breakout zones, but I don't think that's all. I think we're going to actually head further after that, but we're we're definitely looking for the uh the retest of this zone and if you get this retest you're already breaking this uptrend okay 
that tells you anything. Okay, since we're on the uh, daily time frame, let's go to the Elliott Wave. The Elliott Wave count, I don't have I don't have a lot of these lines updated. So let's update them now. We have um we have this one, two, and the white. The one, two, and another one, two here. We came up to the 62% retracement. We're rejecting off of it. I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna leave that off there. And so after this one, two, we're looking for a wave three. Where is this wave three projected? We did update that. So we have from the um, top of wave one to the bottom of wave one. And then where wave two possibly ended. And then we have our extension. That's the 4100 area. That brings us right into this, in the middle of this chop zone. And this chop zone uh, is obvious right here, but then it goes further back in the past from our um, previous videos. So our wave three is projected to be right around that area. We get this, um, if this high stays in here at the 4511, this high is done. Then we have our one, two, one, two setup. We're looking for a smaller, a, a, a even lesser degree wave two, one, two. We got the impulsive move on Friday and then a, uh, we'll have a wave to pull back. It could be, it doesn't have to be 50%. It could be, it could be more shallow, but we're looking for the pullback to be into FOMC. Okay. And after that, one, two, one, two, one, two setup where wave three from the, just from the white, we're not going to, we're going to do spy. We're going to go to spy for the lower, um, lower degrees and we'll, we'll map it out a little bit better. But for this wave three, after we wind up in this triangle, we're looking for price action to fall down to this 4,100 area on the SPX. All right. So we're going to get some reactions on the way down, but they should be shallow. They should be pretty relentless onto this wave three. You'll get a bounce for wave four. Shouldn't be a huge bounce, 30% or so. And then wave five. And then that's just the beginning, folks. That's just wave one of a much higher degree move. So once we get this full five ways down impulse, we should have a nice pullback for wave two. And then that's really where the, the move is going to start happening. And like I said, on, um, I believe Friday's video where we start to get into the three, 4% possible moves somewhere in that, major wave three to the downside all right so let's go ahead and um what else can we do let's get let, let's let's play around with some of these let's go back to that daily let's bring up the mcclellan oscillator all right so our oscillator is making a lower high as well we could draw a trend line there headed head lower but all it was doing was backtesting that little trend it had to the upside, and it should revisit the lows. We're right in the neutral area, which is clear because we're in a triangle right now. So that that pretty much says we're neutral, but just backtesting. It's, it's giving us hints that we're going lower. Now, this one is the important one. McClellan summation is, the, is really important to... Uh, define what I'm talking about with the bear scenario. So we had price action move to the extreme bull area and then kind of triangulate and make a lower high here. Well, we broke this uptrend. We broke the uptrend, couldn't even really back test it. That's how weak, that's how weak this market is. Even after that big move that 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 was nothing on that back test. And now I think we had lower. We're in this bearish territory. And I think we head lower there into the extremes. And I think we might head to the extremes uh, uh, for a little bit until we create some divergence to the upside, uh, positive divergence. And it's going to take some time. If this move is the one that I think it is, it's going to go into extreme area and it's going to take some time to get out of there. All right. So let's um, let's go ahead and... 
Well, there's our trend, our ADX. So we've been in no type of trend. Our ADX is telling us that we are not trending and that that just tells us we're in here. So once we start breaking to the downside or upside, you should see this index start to, to start to rise and, and it really show us that we're trending. Okay, especially if we have a wave three going down here. Okay, this ADX is saying, hey, this trend is over. We had this huge move to the upside. That was trending. It was trending. We peaked and no trend at all. And if we break down below some of these, especially this trend line here, then this ADX is going to rise because we're going to be trending to the downside. Okay, this ADX is going to rise. It, it might look like this for a while, but after we get to that wave three of three, it's really going to start really strength, trending to the upside. The Williams R percent. This is kind of our, our reversal signal that we have here. Uh, we got a lot of things going on there. Let me just um, reduce that a little bit. So with the Williams R, yeah, we're getting to this uh, oversold area. So we should see a little bounce coming up here. Just a little bounce. But we're trending to the downside. You see we have a lower high. So we should see a trend for a while. We can go ahead and draw that. We'll see a trend on the R, Williams R percent. And maybe we get a little bounce into it, but we're going to trend to the downside a little bit more. So uh, we're in a downtrend here. It's not signaling any reversal to the upside. Not like this one. Uh, you, had, you had the first move to the downside, and it, you, know, you had this downtrend here. We broke from that downtrend, and that showed us that we were bouncing at that time. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it here for a second, and then we're gonna get some uh, a couple different indicators. Okay, so I decided to go to SPY on the daily time frame just because we have a couple things happening here. We have a naked chart. Uh, it's nice to look at these charts just by itself, and then uh, I can add some indicators on here. You see that triangle that we're forming here. Um, Let's go ahead and go to the awesome oscillator. So we're uh, we're just doing the same thing. You, you see we're triangulating here. We're going positive, red, green, red, just tightening up. So this is really just giving us a point of view that things are tightening up. Um, the Keltner channel is really important one. You see it moving sideways. Uh, we're when you're in a bullish trend, you're breaking above. You're holding on this um, this middle line here, this uh, moving average, and you're doing the same thing. You're breaking above, breaking above. Uh, really bullish price action. You can see what's happening here. And now we're kind of doing the opposite. We're pushing below. Couldn't hold held the first time here on the moving average, but but really we're moving sideways. So that's why it couldn't hold it. And we got to the top of the Keltner channel. So this is a range play at this point. So the Keltner channel held it here, uh, held towards the bottom here, held towards the top here, and the moving averages we're holding there. We're, we're starting to break down from there, but we'll probably gap up tomorrow or so, but held the top of the Keltner channel as well. So we're in this range. And I think, it doesn't matter what I think, uh, either price action breaks above and pushes this calendar above like this or below. We're not going to know until we start breaking some of these trend lines, the uptrend or the downtrend line. So that that really shows a good um, uh, a, a point of view using the Keltner channels there. Now the Ikemoku, Ichimoku, um, excuse me, sorry if I'm uh, ruining the name, the cloud here. Um, we have, we're, we're in a bullish trend in the yellow cloud. We have the bull trend going on here, but we're, we're getting to it and we, we started to bounce, but it's underneath the cloud. Okay. We're not getting back above it. Couldn't get back above the cloud and we're breaking down again. So we're showing some bearish price action. If this can stay bearish, we're starting to curl. Um, then, you know, we're, we're probably going to push underneath this cloud and then hold under this cloud. So right now we're really in a neutral zone. The trend shows up, but we're starting to see some bearish price action here. So I think we're going to break underneath and start, uh, 
uh, remaining underneath this cloud, uh, this cloud is going to become resistance. Right now, it's just it's neutral. We're inside the cloud. Uh, the top of the cloud's holding us, holding us in. So, just wanted to give you those point of views there. Um, we already looked at the EMAs. We're holding on that 50 EMA. Let me see if I can get you some different information here. Okay, so we're looking at some of the volume information here that we have. We have SPY once again. Um, we're Look at that volume. Now, it was options expiration for the month, but uh, we have a lot of volume on this down move. We have uh, significant volume on the reversal here, but we had some great follow through. So, I mean, I, I give that to the bears, uh, despite the fact that it's uh, options expiration. But let's take a look at the um, on the daily time frame once again. Let's take a look at the volume profile. We came up to the top of the move here. This is a one deviation move from the uh, point of control. Point of control is right here. We came up to the one standard deviation move, and we're rejecting off of that point. So that's, I mean that that's pretty natural place to move from there unless you're extremely bullish and I, I don't think we're in that situation so we're rejecting off of it that's another reason why I think we move lower so we're right into this um, huge volume node and that's created from for example this triangle so we have a lot of price action in here we have a lot of buying and selling so we're in this node right now what happens if we break underneath especially like this 434 area we drop we drop completely fast to this uh, point of control area at the 413. Now that's going to coincide with the 4100, which is just a spike through with that 4100 that we're talking about for the wave three. So this move should be pretty aggressive because of that gap in the volume. And then this is where we're going to gain some support for at least a bounce and then head lower, probably to the next volume node, which is about the 395 area, probably where wave five is going to end somewhere around this area here. So that's when you're looking at volume, how you can kind of tell what's happening uh, on the daily time frame where some of these bounces should come from. We have a large move here for a wave three, some sort of bounce, and then we go to the next node about the three, maybe the 400 area or the 395, somewhere in this volume shelf. Okay, so let's um, let's look at the money flow. Money flow, price action here is getting lower. It's just it's not really showing us a whole bunch. It's it, it, it's mimicking the chart at this point, just sideways. Chaken, Chaken is neutral to now going into the bearish territory again. Couldn't stay above it. Neutral to bearish. Just trying to give you a couple different indicators. Accumulation distribution. Heading lower. Heading lower. Got that spike here on this move. I think that's uh, I think that's distribution. I'm just guessing. But I think that's some distribution. Alright, now we're gonna um we're gonna go over to the uh, SPX on the 65. All right, so we have SPX on the 65 minute time frame. We're within that uh, triangle there, but we have uh, from our earlier video, we wanted to put this in turquoise, this point of view, that it's actually just a rising wedge. We broke down from that wedge, and I do think what's happening is is we're gonna we're gonna back test that wedge going into FOMC. We're looking at uh, about that 4480, or perhaps just a little bit higher, uh, depending on what kind of price action happens. We could we're we're looking for possibly a zigzag on here, five three five, back into uh, this wedge, and then start heading much lower into F FOMC. I can take this gap out of here. We close that gap. We're getting underneath support here, but. Um, I, I don't think that's uh, going to hold very well. It's a zone, so I, I think I don't think that's going to hold for long. We're going to back test here. I don't know if we're going to reach the gap or not, but uh, we're back testing as long as we don't get above this downtrend and this high here. 
which is the options expected move. I don't think we're going to reach it there. I think we're going to back test a little bit for Monday into Tuesday, and then we're going to start heading lower to FOMC on Wednesday. Now, um, on the let's go ahead and go to SPY, and then then we'll head over to Tesla. But SPY, we just want to uh, get the point of view of. Uh, being neutral, first of all, we have to keep an open mind that um, we're in this triangle. And that from this triangle, we can head lower to the bottom of the triangle. Maybe we, we back test here and head lower to the bottom of the triangle. And then we are bullish. We start breaking up. I'll show you a couple. Uh, I'll show you the two scenarios on the on the Elliott wave. But for now, we had an impulsive move down, three wave move up. Uh, possible uh, impulsive move here, three wave move up, and an impulse here in this bear flag that we broke down from. Possibly just retesting this and then heading much lower, much faster. Okay, so that's what, what we have in a traditional point of view for technical analysis. But let's look at the Elliott wave. And on the Elliott Wave, I already have the retracement set up here. I already have our primary move to the downside. This is what I expect straight from here. Um, I didn't change this. I expected it, price action to come up here, and we go straight down from here. Okay. Now we have this. Um, we have this extension, and that's this move, initial move for this five wave move here, and then we should see at least the 433 in the in the near term for this one two here in this lower degree now we, we're gonna have another one two here so we'll we'll check that out uh, each and every day we'll do a some sort of um update so you can see where some of these extensions will be it doesn't have to be 162 it can be longer it could be a, a two 200 uh 262 but in the near term monday tuesday I think we have our five wave impulsive move. And then I think we're going to get some sort of retracement 50, 60%. That would take us right into that bear flag breakdown retest in that 50, 60% there. Okay. So we're not looking for a big bounce, just a little bit. Now that's our primary move. So that's a one, two, one, two, one, two setup. Now in our alternate scenario we were looking at this moving to the upside as a bullish continuation move so this is an a that we completed if you're a bull you're looking for the a three wave move these are all zigzags a b three wave move up for b now we need a three wave we have two waves there three wave move down for c and I don't know if we're going to get that. It looks like a five-wave move. We did not make a new low there. Sorry, let me zoom back out. I accidentally... All right, so we did not make a new low there. So that you can't count that as a C-wave. It needs a break underneath here. Unless somehow that would be a three-wave move. And somehow we move this over here. And then that would be D and E, and we just break to the upside from here. But I, I would I would imagine that we we have a move down for C, three wave move up for D, E, and continue. So wh what am I trying to say? After we already had our impulsive, probably an impulsive move up, three wave move up here. Now if we have this retracement, like I'm talking about in early in the week, Monday and Tuesday this price action down low here is going to have to hold this trend line to the to the downside is going to have to hold or maybe we even get a gap down uh tomorrow uh monday maybe we go down a little bit further and test down there cuz that would just make this a zigzag a 535 five. okay we got to hold the support for wave c have a d and an e and move on from there. All right. So this this trend line is really important to hold. We break this trend line. If we bounce, I think it's more likely that we're getting this 
set up for the downside. But if we come straight down here, the bulls have much more of a chance to to hold this trend line and start oscillating, filling out this triangle a little bit more before heading to the upside. That would be our alternate. We're just looking at those two scenarios right now. This triangle breaking down or this triangle breaking up. It's as simple as that. All right. Now let's um let's stop wasting time here and let's look at Tesla. We're gonna have Tesla on the monthly time frame, and we're gonna go quickly, quickly through Tesla on these multiple time frames. I don't want to waste your time. Let's go here. We have Tesla, this huge uptrend. We have our possible three wave. I think it's a five wave move down, but uh, you know it looks like it, it could possibly be counted as three wave, but we have this downtrend that's respecting. We stopped. Price action stopped right at that trend line. It's also, you have a nice, nice resistance zone here that I can draw on here as well. Okay, the... Uh, the indicators that I have here we did we barely made a cross here, but I don't think it, the month's not over, so you can't count that yet. We're in oversold area. We're crossing over on the slow stow. Let's go to the weekly. So right into resistance there. That's why we're swinging. We're swinging to the downside. We move up anymore, and I think we're gonna get a fifth wave to the upside, which would be. A bullish scenario, but I, then I think we get a pullback, or it could be a one-two-one-two, one, two, and we the price action just just continues to move to the upside on this weekly time frame. Look at that, right into this downtrend. Respected it many times. We just closed right at the downtrend. I am I am bearish. I have bearish plays. I have multiple contracts bearish. Let me draw this in a different way. There's some more resistance here, just in case price peaks above there somehow. We have resistance above it as well. But I, I think uh, we're going to triangulate at minimum. We're going to come back here and, and test a, uh, a trend line. But if this is a one, two, one, two, then wave three is going to be massive. If this is a one, two, three, four, and we get a new high for five, then we're still going to pull back or consolidate before heading to uh, another impulsive wave up. Now, in the weekly time frame, we're crossing over bearish. You see the, the price action is pretty, pretty neutral here. Crossing bearish into um, overbought territory. And we're going to have to see this slow stow turn over but let's see what we have on the week or on the uh, daily time frame just zooming through this you know uh, the tides are turning here and i just want to show you now I, I do have this channel here i was looking for this channel hold price does respect this channel you can see other people clearly had this so price is respecting it we're above it and we have this rising pivot we're above it so yeah we're we're in a uh, a real bullish stance uptrend higher high higher low higher high higher low you know the, we have to respect that but i think with the indicators and and such i think we're looking for see what we got here i think we're looking for uh, some lower we have uh bearish divergence after making this high we made another high. We have bearish divergence here again in this move here. I, I don't think price is going any higher. I'm taking this reversal. We have the histogram waning just a little bit. We're crossing back over with bearish divergence. We're crossing back over in the slow stow. So I think this is just the beginning for Tesla to turn over. We're right at the uh, resistance of the gap, testing the gap. We made a slight new high here, but a slight new low, higher or lower high on RSI and on the slow stow. I think this thing turns over next week. And I don't think it has to wait for FOMC. 
I think uh, stocks like Apple and NVIDIA may bounce, but I think Tesla moves down from here. Okay, you made that slight new high on the 65-minute bearish, bearish sell signal, crossed over sell signal, negative divergence into overbought territory, sell signal, sell signal on the 65. We're, we're heading lower on the 65-minute for sure. Okay, that's what's happening right now. But that's what I want to show you. That's why I made a short video, the, the YouTube short, and said we're getting to Tesla. We're 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 uh we're short on Tesla. We're looking for that reversal. I think we got it here on Tesla. All right. I hope that helps. Thanks for joining us here at Option Center. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend, and uh we will update you again tomorrow.